In this webcast, we're going to talk about conflict, conflict resolution, as in stop avoiding it. Let's go. Hey everybody, this is Antoine Dupont with Catapult Marketing and this is webcast number 34. And today we have Dr. Leanne Davy with us. Hi Leanne, how are you? Hi Antoine, I'm great. How are you? I am doing fantastic. So Leanne, you're really um, famous in the world of conflict management, team effectiveness and communication. So a lot of people in that space uh, know you, but the, for the few business owners out there that do not know you, um, please introduce yourself and tell us why you get up in the morning. Yeah, great. So I am Leanne Davy, and as you said, I am a conflict, I guess, expert, hopefully not a conflict junkie. I don't want to <laughs> pretend like I enjoy it too much. Right. And uh, I am an advisor to executive teams, helping mm -hmm. them uh, unearth those conversations that their businesses really, really need them to have. Mm -hmm. And then sort of guiding them through those conversations in a way that strengthens the trust on their teams and, and helps them create a breakthrough. And that helps me get up every morning when I can help a business break through a conversation that's been sitting on their too hard pile for weeks mm -hmm. and, and in some cases years. <laughs> year, that yeah. is, yeah, that's the most, uh, that's the most energizing thing that, uh, that I can do. Very, very cool. Well, thank you. It's really, uh, really super cool to uh, to have you on the show. And uh, you're, you're just north of the border, if I, uh, if I remember well, in a beautiful city of Toronto. So oh, I, I have, am. and I think you're my first Canadian on the show. So that's really cool. So oh, well, well, welcome Canada. Yeah, the pressure is on. You, you're the first, yeah, you're the first Canadian on the show. So that's really cool. Well, I have uh, to tell you, they may revoke my Canadian passport for talking all this conflict because it is definitely not our strong suit up here. So yeah, so uh, yeah, don't, don't tell them. <laughs> right, yeah, because Canadians are known for you know being uh, very positive and always yes and you know complying and not really uh, be well. What is it? Conflict adverse, right? Yes, we are. And, and uh, people south of the border, you Americans think we're nice, but actually what we are is we're just passive aggressive. Passive so, aggressive. Uh, you know, most people stab you in the front, but here you just get stabbed mm -hmm. in the back. So watch out. We're not quite as nice as, as you think we are, mm -hmm. but we definitely don't have the guts to say it to your face. So mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, right. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying you're, very you're, hard. You're trying your best. Okay. So yeah. listen, I want to, we're going to do a, a show about team effectiveness and conflict resolution and how that applies to you, uh, all of you business owners out there, is you know that at one point or another, uh, there's going to be some difficult conversations that need to be had um, that you've been avoiding, because uh, I can raise my hand as guilty as charged. Um, and there's going to be some conflict, like, you know, people don't get along, uh, you know, from one team to the other, they're just, there's some friction and, you, you know, you're in the middle and you're like, you know, why can't they all get along? Um, and, um, and that's what I want to talk about. You know, how do you deal with that? Because I think that when I, talking with you before um, is, you know, most of us avoid uh, confrontation. This is not an area that we like to be in. So we'll avoid it with everything we've got. Um, and it's not healthy. And I remember you, were, you said something to me that was absolutely brilliant. Is every time you avoid a conversation, I remember how you, you said it. It's like you're, you're, not, you're not putting in, um, it, it's, it's kind of like you're, you're taking money. I don't remember how you said it. No, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, screw, I'm screwing it up. So say it better than, than, than I'm trying to say it here. Save yes. me. Every time there's some kind of an uncomfortable conversation that you mm -hmm. need to have, and that can be in your business, it could be with a business partner, with an employee, and we mm -hmm. all know that it can be at home too. Mm -hmm. Right, um, yeah. What we do is it's like 
oh, I can't, I can't afford to have that conversation right now. I don't have the energy. So it's mm -hmm. just like charging it on our credit card. That's right. You know, there we, you go. we really, we want that thing. No, we can't afford it. But you mm -hmm. promise yourself that I'll put it on the card and I'll, I'll pay it off next paycheck. And so we do that with conflict and we go into conflict debt. Mm -hmm. And then those debts start to pile up, those conversations. You know, we needed to talk about whether we, you know, are going to hire another person or not. We haven't mm -hmm. had the uncomfortable conversation about how big do we actually want this business to be. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a business owner last week, and he's in a, a shared ownership situation. Mm -hmm. And one of the owners wants to grow the business huge. And he just wants to keep it so they can do great work and have a great lifestyle. That's conflict debt. That's right. sitting there. It right. means they can't make calls about which projects to take on. They can't uh, decide whether to add new staff or not. Mm -hmm. So all that debt is there. And the challenge with conflict debt is like any debt, it gathers interest. Mm. So, you know, we pay for the privilege of postponing that <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> kicking kick kick the can down the road. Exactly. And so we pay in all different ways. So in our business, we may stagnate. We may not have growth because we can't make the tough call about, you know, launching a new product line. Mm -hmm. um, in our teams, we may create conflict up by not dealing with the guy who just isn't cutting it. So we, we have this huge interest payment in making everybody else work overtime and pick up the slack. Mm -hmm. But we have conflict debt for ourselves too. There are situations that are frustrating us or we'd really like to give someone feedback and mm -hmm. we don't. And so we pay the interest in right. sleepless nights and, and becoming demoralized and dreading going to work on Monday. So right. that, that idea is that we need to think about every one of those uncomfortable conversations as something where we have the choice to pay it in cash Mm -hmm. when we can, you know, when it's relatively small, we're only paying the principal mm -hmm. or to, you know, put it on our debt and have to service that debt with interest that compounds and, and it gets bigger and it gets harder. Um, so that's how I really encourage people to think about conflict. We know not to put stuff on our card we can't afford. Mm -hmm. we've, we've learned what how that just kills us. Right. And we haven't learned uh, not to postpone or delay conflicts right. that we can't afford. Right. Right. No, you're absolutely right. And then the, and then all of a sudden um, we explode because we've been carrying on all this. And then you're like, you know, why are you like exploding? Why are you overreacting? And everything is because we haven't addressed those things as they go along. And, uh, and that's the price to pay. So we're going to talk with you today and you're going to tell us exactly how not to do it. So we're going to start the show. We want to address three points. Um, this is a, this is a, uh, a question and answer type of show. So if you have any questions out there, please put them in the uh, in the box below. Uh, if it's a question for Leanne, preferably for Leanne, because she's has expertise in there. Um, I will um, bring Leanne in and make sure she answers the uh, the questions. Uh, and before we start, you know, I mean, tell us uh, if you like uh, if you like this so far, or if you know you could subscribe. This is uh, how uh, actually we know we're doing a good job. All right, so. Um, three things. Uh, the first one um, that you told me before the show was alignment. So what do you mean by team uh, or team alignment? What do you mean by that? Yeah, so one of the problems is that we we tend to just wait for problems to come up in the business. We mm -hmm. wait for someone's interpretation of good customer service to clash with our own. Instead of getting aligned at the outset about what our expectations are. Mm -hmm. So much of conflict comes from a mismatch between what we expect and what we get. And that's where, where trust really gets violated as well. We were right. expecting one thing and we got another. Right. So it's really uh, fantastic when business owners take the time, mm -hmm. or managers, it, it, really anybody, take the time to invest up front in saying, what do we expect of one another? What does good look like? 
how are we going to show up here? Uh, if you get aligned on that, uh, mm -hmm. then you sort of inoculate the team against some of those problems that might go wrong down the line. Mm -hmm. So talking in advance about prickly situations that might come up, uh, mm -hmm. you know, what happens if I've promised you something and I feel like I'm not going to be able to deliver it? And because we've never set up that uncomfortable situation, uh, some people are going to choose to take the high road, give you a call and say, hey, you know, I know it's still a couple of days away, but I'm, I'm worried I'm not going to deliver, mm -hmm. you know, heads up. But right. other people are either going to try and go for the Hail Mary and stay up all night trying to make it happen. Mm -hmm. um, and, and other people are just going to quietly like deliver nothing. <laughs> right. hope we don't so if we've set up an advance, look, we all know that every once in a while you're not going to be able to deliver. Mm -hmm. Most important thing on our team is that you flag it so that we have options, so that you leave the person a, an escape route. So if you set up discomfort right. in advance, if mm -hmm. you've talked about, so another example, businesses mm -hmm. run on tension. Tension's good. I'll give you one example from a client that's a food manufacturer. Right. So the head of operations, I said to him, what's your job here? Said, My job is to run as an efficient a plant as possible to make sure we're using our capacity efficiently to keep the unit price down. So, yep. Perfect. Um, right. Then I said to the head of sales, what's your job? What are you here to do? He said, I'm here to create flexibility for our customers because our customers want to differentiate from each other. You know, everybody wants a different product to be able to have something special to put in their flyer. So that's what I'm, I'm driving flexibility. Right. So I'm looking at these two guys, Yeah. <laughs> like Mr. <laughs> Consistency and Mr. Flexibility. I'm like, so how does it feel? Right. And of course, these two were often at each other's throats because they didn't realize it was supposed to feel like that. Right. That if they're pushing really hard, if they're growing this business as much as possible, they're going to have a lot of fights about, is it worth taking that? My favorite story with them, right. they got an order from a big grocery chain for a million racks of ribs. A million. A million. So the sales guy was ecstatic, a million racks of ribs. All the ops guy could think is like, pigs don't just come as ribs. Like, right. What am I going to do with the rest of the pig? And how am I, what kind of haircut am I going to take on the price there? And when you understood that the ops guy was going to have a major hit on his numbers because mm -hmm. all the inefficiency and waste and the sales guy was going to be the big winner. Right. You realize why you'd set this up for tension. Yeah. Go so, and sell me some sausage with those ribs. Exactly. Yeah. Anyone for pork bellies. <laughs> um, so if you can set that up in advance and make mm -hmm. sure everyone on your team knows where the conflict is going to come, how you're expected to deal with it. If you set it up as, as normal and healthy and, mm -hmm. and a problem you're going to have to solve together as allies versus something adversarial. That's step one. And you are a million miles further ahead. If you right. Set that on the outside. Yeah. And I think it's really understanding each other's uh, and also each other's style and strength because we do come from different, um, you know, one of the things, one of my weaknesses that I know is I'm not an attention to detail guy. I am the big picture, you know, details is for other people to figure out. Um, and obviously I'm dealing in a business that has a lot of details. So I have to understand and respect, you know, that some people are going to need, you know, more precise stuff. And then also understanding that, you know, they are, they have to pay attention to those details and, uh, and that's just a different skill set and a different way of thinking of, of things. You know, I'm like, let's go. And, and, um, uh, and the detail people want to have a system in place to execute, the. Uh, Whatever I'm, whatever I'm up to. So that that's a great thing. Uh, alignment. Uh, so point number one is alignment. Um, and I'd like to hear from you guys out there uh, some examples uh, in your team on how there are some differences between operations and sales, or sales and marketing, or the executive executive team, and uh, and management, and then seeing what there is where there is some areas where. Um, 
you see a lack of alignment or areas that you have actually done alignments. I'd love to, uh, I'd love to hear. And obviously everybody yeah. versus HR. That's a good one. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've, n- I've never heard of that. Everybody never is against HR. Yeah. HR. Yeah. The ugly duckling of corporate. Uh, it's always their fault. Um, all right. So the second point, uh, the first one was alignment. The second one is individual, individual differences. What do you mean? Like, is it everybody? You did the beautiful segue to this point when you said about detail orientation <laughs> versus big picture thinking. No so, way. <laughs> yeah, look, see? Wow. You're psychic, I think. Uh-huh. Um, so we forget, uh, and I especially, so I'm an entrepreneur and a business owner too. Mm-hmm. And it's really easy for me to forget that not everybody thinks the way I do. Not everybody is excited by the same things I am and not everybody approaches conflict the way I do. So Mm -hmm. me, I'm Dr. Conflict. (laughs) Dr. Conflict. I'm good with conflict. I like it. As a marketer, I love it. (laughs) But, uh, you know, as a marketer, you love it, but, you know, as an employee, maybe not so much. Mm -hmm. Um, And so something that for me is, you know, candor and investing in you and telling you the things that our business needs to be better to you is blunt and hurtful. And, uh, mm. and so one of my, my friends, Dan Pontrefact, another author said, you conflict is in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> and so uh, it's so important that business owners take the time to appreciate the different humans that they work with as humans, as individuals who are motivated by very different things, have very different um, tolerances. So, So one of the examples I love is when we do this work with a team, we use an assessment tool called the Berkman, which allows us to look at those individual differences. And one of the measures we look at is how you like to receive a tough message. So if you have to get a tough message from your boss, Mm -hmm. uh, how do you want it? And about, so if we say, okay, there's this kernel of feedback that this person needs to make Uh themselves better. Okay. So same kernel of feedback for everybody, but there's about 25% of the population that if you go in and you, you know, you give a lot of context and you're really careful, maybe you do the, am I allowed to swear on this podcast? Um, Uh Yes, you are. So you do the old shit sandwich of like, tell them something good, tell them something bad, tell them some. If you do that, Uh all they hear is the bread in the shit sandwich. Like, oh, clearly everything's good. Because it's been too sugar coated. Mm -hmm. About 25% of the population needs you to take that feedback, stick it in the middle of a snowball and launch it at their heads. (laughs) Right. Right. You know, give um, it like stop dancing around it. Just let it, let it, let it rip already. I can, I can deal with it. And but, that's how you know mm-hmm. usually that you're dealing with one of those people. They start to get antsy and fidgety when you when you start laying it on thick, and they start to just they don't like it. Right. And they will usually say something. So either you'll see no discomfort at all, which is like I thought I was bludgeoning this person with constructive feedback, and they're not right. flinching. Right. So either it's not even registering on the Richter scale for that. Right, right. Or they'll start their spidey sense. They'll start to pick up that there's something in there, but you're not getting to it. And then they'll just tell you, just like, lay it on me. Right. And that's about 25% of the population. Much more likely to be those entrepreneurs. We like it like that, right? Just right. like, oh, hit me over the head with it. Uh-huh. The rest of the population is much more likely to need you to take that feedback and put it in a nice box with some tissue and wrap it with the ribbon and a really nice card. So they open the ribbon and they take the lid off the box and they're like, oh, some feedback. But it's so beautifully packaged that Mm. they they never have that moment of like putting the lid back on the box. And, and we get that wrong all the time. We just deliver things directly because we're in a hurry or just bluntly because that's how we like it. And we, we don't stop to recognize that that's going to be hurtful for some people, that it's right. going to cause them to sort of put up the shields and protect themselves. So step two is really about understanding the people that you work with, 
knowing who needs you to book a meeting and sit down and make some small talk and who can you do the drive by right like right, right yeah. by their cubicle like what were you thinking buddy hand grenade as you drive by exactly but so, i think i think it's i think it's the syndrome of all i mean of a lot of business owners because business owners are driven um although not all business owners are like that but there is a um you know that they will have a tendency to be blunt uh and not taking the time and i can you know, completely uh, say, I, I can so relate to that. Um, not taking the time to actually provide feedback that is how they want to receive it. It's like how I want to deliver it. And it says, listen, this sucks. And don't do that ever again. Okay. okay actually, great. it's kind no, of funny. It, yeah. Some of the most senior people, mm -hmm. the Berkman allows us to look at how they behave and how they want to be treated and mm -hmm. what we find is a lot of uh, leaders and business owners fall in the category of they can dish it out but they can't take it mm. so they can be very blunt to everybody else but the minute it's them it's like whoa, 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 whoa hang on right like, so that's a that's a common profile yeah that's actually that's interesting so um so i'd like to hear from you guys again in the comments below uh the types of style you have in your company and how you have to navigate that or people that the way they approach you uh actually works or doesn't work um you know i can i can say that um i don't know i would have to say i mean i know that there's some people you know what it is with me is with, with certain people and I, it's probably because their style there's some people i can take on their feedback day in day out there's some people i'm like I am not going to hear a word you're saying and you have, it's kind of like, I'm, I, I don't know. Um, I call the, it the mother-in-law effect. The mother-in-law so, effect. Yeah. You fall into the mother-in-law effect the category and I'm not listening to a word you're saying. Exactly. It, so the way that it works is our brains take neutral information and we pass it through the same closet in our brain where we keep all our baggage. <laughs> And right. so um, if we pass that message through the, the baggage closet and it's from a person that we respect or we like, we read that message and we're like, oh, useful. Thanks for saving my bacon or thanks for the helpful advice. But we take that exact same neutral message and pass it through the baggage closet for somebody. When the message comes from somebody we don't like, we're like, hang on. Hang on like, a minute. Oh, yeah. So uh, that unfortunately is how the brain works. And, and because we don't get the exact same message from, from your mother and your mother-in-law, we can't mm -hmm. recognize that it's actually not the message. It's, it's, it's our baggage about the sender. But mm. uh, it's really important that when you get something like that, you, you try and ignore, you know, if it were an email, it's like pretend you can't see who it's from. Right. Yeah, just say if if I changed who this was from to somebody I really trust and respect, mm -hmm. what would I get out of this message? What value would I get out? Because our our negative assumptions send us on a pretty ugly spiral. Mm, that, that, indeed, that's for sure. All right. So number one was alignment. Number two is people are different. Uh, individual differences. <laughs> what? <There's, laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I thank you. It is actually, thank you for, for the, uh, the, the pearl there. Um, number three, building some skills. So talk to me about what do you mean by building some skills? Yeah. So if we take the example of conflict and how mm -hmm. we, we can change people's mindset and help them understand that, okay, I, I can't put this on my card. I can't rack up any more conflict debt. I got to mm -hmm. pay this conflict in cash. So mm -hmm. we can create that mindset. And then suddenly they look at me with these big eyes, like, I have no idea how. <laughs> like, <laughs> how do I say that so that A, I'm not a jerk, right? Because right? because our first reactions about how to disagree with someone tend to be pretty rough. Mm -hmm. um, how do I say it in a way that uh, increases the trust uh, between us? How, how can I say something difficult in a way that's going to enhance my relationship, not detract from it? Um, what if it's none of my business? It, you know, how do I know which cases to get involved in and which ones to stay out of? And I guess the number one, um, not going to be as important for business owners, but so many people need to know, how do I disagree with my boss without getting fired? <laughs> 
that's a big one. It, I think for business owners, it would be more, what if it's a really important customer and I need to disagree with them um, without you know, pissing them off or losing them as a customer. So right. we're trying to build skills. And so there is a very simple but hard way to have conflict um, that does all those things. It, it allows you to look at yourself at the uh, end of the day, look at yourself in the mirror and be proud of yourself. It uh, strengthens your relationships and it makes you more valuable to the business instead of getting you fired. Um, and so um, people are always surprised, but what we try and do is go straight to the issue. Mm -hmm. We go straight to finding a solution. And that's mistake number one. So we want to build skills first around establishing a good line of communication. Got it. So we want to teach people how to say things in a way that's less likely to create defensiveness. So a lot of times that's asking something as a question. Okay. So, uh, okay. I hear, I hear your plan. Um, sounds great. I think the customers are going to love it. Mm -hmm. what, what impact do you think it's going to have on our, uh, our shipping department? Mm -hmm. And so that's a, a way of saying, what you really want to say is, are you freaking kidding me? We'll <laughs> never shove that out through, you know, our shipping. And, but, right. but it's much better to say right. it in a way that allows the other person to arrive at that conclusion themselves. If, if you want to win an argument, have your point come out of their mouth. Uh, right. Make, make it their idea. I think it was in the big, my big fat Greek wedding, make it that it's his idea. And then all of a sudden it's uh, it's great. But I remember talking with you um, back in, uh, in Lambertville, New Jersey, and we were talking about that. And you were saying that we're not wired for conflict. You know, no wonder we, we suck at it. It's because we are not, I don't think we're wired for conflict. I think we, we avoid it, but avoiding it is not, uh, it's actually more natural than, than we may think. And we're also not trained to deal with conflict um, yeah. ve from very, very, very young. Uh, tell me, talk to me more about that, because I thought this was a very interesting point. Yeah, so uh, if you think about all the things you were taught as a child in the service of good manners, okay? Um, if yeah. you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all, okay? So uh, you want the Canadian version of that? Um, it's this, if you can't say anything nice, wait till we're in the car. That's the Canadian version. That's okay. and the French and the French thing is we have a thing is like turn your t uh, your tongue seven times in your mouth before you say yeah. There's a thing like that. Just twist your your tongue seven times in your mouth before okay. you're going to say it. So it gives you time to think and say okay, I'm going to avoid saying it. So, but yeah. it's it's all the same version. It's all the same it's just, thing. Right. So right. we learn. Uh, we learn not. So no wonder we don't give people constructive feedback. Because since we were about two, we learned if we can't say anything nice, um, we learned to mind our own business. So mm. teachers maybe told us on the playground, you know, mind your own business that, you know, those people who are getting in a fight and disrupting your entire learning environment, that's none mm. of your business somehow. Right. So now you got two people on your team who are in some ridiculous fight about something, but you're not supposed to get involved because it's none of your business. So that's... Mm -hmm. Another big problem. Um, the other one we learned from very early is, uh, is if we have a sibling or another kid on the playground and we say mm -hmm. something and they start to cry. And, and somehow I think adults have this like extra sensory perception. They can just all of a sudden, there, there's no adult in sight, but the minute you make another kid cry, whoosh, there they are, like looming over you with the, now look what you've done. Right. And, and what you learn is that First of all, somebody else showing emotions is bad. Right. And secondly, that it was your fault. So right. now you're still tiptoeing around the boardroom, trying so carefully not to evoke emotion or upset anybody. So now your whole business is held hostage by the criers and the yellers because from, from the get-go, you've learned that you shouldn't be triggering emotion. So it's a bad mm. And then we have this, yeah, it's, it's a bad one. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's a yeah, negative ahead. relationship with power that starts then too, right? So you have some really mean, nasty soccer coach 
and you come home, you're like, dad, the soccer coach wasn't letting me play today. Or, uh, and, and you get the pat on the head and you're like, well, try harder and don't get in trouble. And you learn that, uh, you know, might is right. And you learn that if your boss does something bad, you're the one who's supposed to change. And we wonder why these Harvey Weinstein cases are, you know, everywhere is mm -hmm. because we learn not to speak truth to power. We learn that we're the one who has to change, not anyone else. Mm -hmm. So there's, I, I call them the itty bitty shitty committee. They sit on your shoulder and they whisper this <laughs> crap in your ear. So every time that you're right about to pay off that conflict in cash and you're like, no, no I'm not making that mistake again. They're like, well, but if you can't see anything nice and, and you have to like flip grandma off your shoulder and be like, stop it. Um, but right. it's really hard to, to get those voices. Yeah, out. no, it's, it's, it's really cool. So it's really, really a great feedback. And I, and I think this is really an interesting because, you know, um, you be, you may think and, and be out there that, uh, and I think like a lot of people that you don't like conflict and you avoid it. Uh, but you're not alone, and I think that there is a whole bunch of our education that is based on and what we've learned uh, to avoid it. Uh, and and it's true, like you know, uh, or there are some people that will get angry quickly, or uh, yeah, you have the criers, so you're like, oh my god, now I have to deal with this and whatnot, as opposed to well, you know, they're just they're they're dealing with their emotions the way they're dealing with their emotions, and. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, you're just gonna have to deal with it, but it's just, it's, I think it's a very interesting conflict resolution. And I've learned a lot talking with you because um, it helps me, um, you know, especially me being, uh, being blunt and sometimes avoiding confrontation completely uh, because I don't know, you know, I think it's in the skill set is I just don't know how else to be, but just blunt. Then, then I'm not just not going to say anything because I don't know how to sugarcoat it. And that's, that's a scary right. one. Right. So, so it is, we, we need mm -hmm. to, so the problem is because we teach children from birth that conflict is bad, uh -huh. nowhere along the way do we teach them how to have it well, right? Because we just right. don't have it. So we never learn the skills right. that we need, both as a part of healthy relationships but also as this critical defense against unhealthy relationships. If right. we don't have the words and we don't have the skills to raise our discomfort, mm -hmm. then you know we're, we're all in trouble. I, I think right. one thing I really want your viewers to remember is the goal of this is, to not, uh, is not to get to the point of liking conflict. That, I hope that doesn't happen. That's a bad place to get to. But it's being comfortable that paying off your conflict in, uh, in cash is going to cost you a lot less over the long haul mm -hmm. than racking up this conflict debt. So it's not like uh, I want you to ever relish conflict. I like to think about it a lot like I think about the ab part of my workout. My goal is never to like doing abs but it's just to understand that if I do abs, everything gets easier. I can run longer. I can bike better. My back doesn't get sore. So not that we're ever going to get to the point of enjoying conflict, but that we're going to realize that the, the best way is to actually make it a habit, uh, move through it quickly before it compounds interest and it gets, it gets really, really harmful. Well, thank you so much, Leanne. This was really, really cool. Um, uh, you know, just great, great, uh, great subject because anyone that is growing a company uh, or has people in their company, uh, as in everybody, um, <laughs> right, um, needs to have, uh, you know, Dr. Conflict nearby. You know, one call, 1 800 Dr. Conflict. And Leanne <laughs> is here. That number. Yes. Yeah. You, Get it right now before I publish this video. 1-800-DOCTOR-CONFLICT. <laughs> so um, thank you so much, Leanne. This was really, really cool. Uh, I think it, it gives us um, a lot of things to think about and how to uh, stop avoiding conflict uh, and learning the skills and, you know, and proper communication. Now, Leanne, um, how can people, what, what do you do? I mean, do you have workshops? Are you a public speaker? You know, how do you get around? Like how people can connect with you and, and, uh, and, and learn more about you? 
Yeah. So the best place to find out information about me is on our website at threecoz.com. So it's just the number three, mm -hmm. C-O-Z-E.com. We're going to put the, no, it's, she said Z, not Z. Oh. Yeah, she, I did. I did. I did. I said Z, right? I was no, being you so said, careful. You said Z, but it's it's okay. I'm French, so I totally get it. Okay. Uh, but we're gonna put that the link right. Good. Yeah, we're gonna put the link right below so they can just click on it. So, so they can translate. That's yeah. right. Um, otherwise, on there, there's about 400 free articles that you can look at with tips and and, mm. and in many. There's a whole section of my blog called "Right Words to Say," and there mm. I actually give you the actual words. Say this. You can like hold the script and say it. And <laughs> uh, I do a lot of writing for Harvard Business Review. People can find my articles there. Mm -hmm. um, so lots of places to find me, and hopefully I'll see you at an event uh, somewhere soon. Very, very cool. So on, on that note, um, thank you so much, Leanne. Thank you for uh, for spending the time to uh, talking to all of us and hopefully be, be better communicator and stop avoiding conflict. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.